this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches and today I'm going to vlog about the Marathon JBB. I really like this watch and uh, it has pluses, it has negatives, but we're going to talk about it in more detail. So here's a quick look at the technical specifications for this watch. You can easily just freeze frame it if you see something that interests you but is moving too fast. It's a big watch, 46 millimeters. Lug, the, lug width is 22 millimeters. Uh, it comes with a black strap, but I went ahead and purchased the extra stainless steel. Here's a really random matchup of the Marathon JDD on the right and the Rolex DSSD or Deep Sea Sea Dweller Blue on the left. The, the reason I'm showing you this is the uh, it kind of gives you an idea of the relative size. That, that Marathon is definitely big. The Deep Sea Dweller is Rolex's, I think, biggest, manliest looking watch, but it's kind of dwarfed by the Marathon. Now, the Marathon is not as fine a watch. I'm not trying to represent it as having equal construction or value because it doesn't. The movement is not nearly as good, and I don't think the fit and finish is, is nearly as good either, let alone the technical specifications. But for sheer presentation, it holds its own, especially at that price point. There's something wrong with me. I totally know that there's something wrong with me. I wish I could walk around like, like that picture of Fidel Castro wearing two watches. But man, if I could get away with this, I would do it in a heartbeat, except for I'd go with a foursome. I really do like the dial on this watch and the tritium tubes. The thing that I absolutely love about it is that it has military time. It has that 24 hour time. Now in this watch, it is worked into the dial on an angled chapter ring. So it is tucked completely out of the way. You only see it when you've got the watch at a slight angle and it's not conflicting with those Arabic numerals. Here we're just taking another quick look at the bezel, but you get a good look at the angled chapter ring which contains military time, so it's not too busy. Okay, so I'm absolutely a complete sucker for a domed sapphire crystal, and um, it's a little hard to photograph, but you can see it here. The, this is a three millimeter thick sapphire domed crystal. It is domed very slightly and you really only notice it when you when you turn it on this angle to look at it. The other thing that I think is really notable is that very chunky, uh, looks like gear cut um, bezel. It's quite thick, it's real manly, it's very big. Um, there's a small problem with it though, there's something that I don't like about it very much, uh, and I'm not referring to the crystal, that's perfect, but for the bezel itself, there's times, there's little spots where it's a little hard to turn, other spots where it's a little easier. It's not sloppy, it's just not quite consistent. Um, it's, um, you know, my, my deep sea uh, Rolex has got a, um, a detent ball bearing system in it, and this is clearly just a clip, but I think it's kind of a, a cheap arrangement. And so the, the, the clicking and action of the bezel is not nearly as satisfying as it should. On the one hand, on the other hand, it looks brilliant. So look, I'm not picky, I have OCD, and so do you, or you wouldn't be watching this. If you're a watch collector, there's probably something wrong with you. What's wrong with this hole? <laughs> All the holes are like this. Now, it's nice to have a drilled lugs case because you can change the straps much easier. But look at this, it's oblong, as though it were sort of drilled on a bit of an angle. Um, so it's not perfectly round, it was not drilled perfectly straight. And look, I entertain myself with thoughts that there's a reason for this. Like, it's extra large, so you can get a toothpick in there easier, or something like that. But, you know, it's probably just not quite right. It's a minor irritation for crazy people like me, but nothing more. On a bright note, the crown guards are really cool, and I absolutely love the crown. It's got that heavily textured, knurled feel to it. Super easy to grip, easy to turn, feels very substantial, um, yet it doesn't dig into my wrist when I wear the watch. Now, I have heard any number of reviews say that watches like this have got a great big, easy to grip 
crown so that you can easily do it wearing, you know, get in there and change it, wearing, uh, adjust your watch, wearing gloves or underwater. But that's like the craziest thing I ever heard of. If you, it's a screw down crown and if you unscrew it, pull it out and start adjusting the watch underwater, you're definitely compromising the water tightness of the watch, number one. Number two, who needs, who crosses time zones underwater and feels a sudden urge to adjust their watch? So no, I'm quite certain that's not why it's knurled. It's knurled just so it's exceptionally easy for you to use at any given moment. Remember, this is a purpose-built watch. This is a real military diver built to all kinds of crazy military specs. Good to 38 TM, which is 300 meters, does have a dive extension. And then also it has a fold over clip or clasp to it. And the version I have features the great seal of the United States, but depending on the version you have, it could have Canada, uh, Canada's seal there, or you could get the sterile version that has none. When it's closed, clipped closed, you see both the seal and the embossed marathon name. The Marathon JDD ships with a standard rubber strap, which I'll show you and we'll talk about in a moment. But I went ahead and purchased the optional stainless steel uh, strap. And you can see it here. It costs uh, discounted. You can get them for about $175. I think they list for more like $200, but pretty easy to find them at a discount. And you can see that the links have a lot of structure to them and they don't line up completely flat. They are intended to uh, stick out a little bit on the wrist and I think it makes for quite a nice look. Here's a stock picture of the Marathon JDD and it's shown on the supplied black rubber, rubber strap. It's a nice strap. It's got a carbon fiber imprint look to it, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. It's natural rubber and it is impregnated with a vanilla scent. Very refreshing. I think that's to keep you from getting funky when you wear it and get all sweaty. Here's a closer look and you can see that carbon fiber imprint. It's a nice strap. I just, I, I don't like rubber. I don't like rubber straps. I, I'm really a stainless steel guy. It's pretty much the only thing I like to wear because I like to be able to unsnap my watch quickly without having to buckle and unbuckle it. And uh, here you're going to take a look at the buckle, uh, the tang. It's a nice one, but I'm just not in favor of having to wrestle with my belt in the morning as well as my watch. I'd really rather just snap a stainless steel bracelet on it and be done. Packaging is very plain Jane, strictly utilitarian. Uh, the only silver that you're getting on this is uh, silver ink. However, it is sold in probably army bases and PXs all over the world, so there really needs to be nothing fancy about the watch. This is pretty much all military issue, and there's nothing pretentious about it. Okay, guys, we all love stuff that flashes and glows in the dark. Reminds us of when we were kids, and tritium had a major impact on me when making a buying decision for this watch. It really contributed. So you, you could do your research on tritium tubes. You probably already know. I, I won't spend a lot of time on the technicalities of it, but basically it's a radioactive gas encapsulated in a small, tiny little miniature tube. The tube is coated with phosphorescent paint and the breakdown of the radioactive gas causes luminescence so you don't have to charge the loom in the dark you simply uh, just yeah turn off the lights and it's always there now it is glowing a lot lighter than superluminova on a rolex for example or a seiko or an orient and even some cheap watches have got really really bright loom and this isn't like that its advantage isn't its brightness. Its advantage is that it never needs charging and it never runs out. So you could be in the dark for hundreds and hundreds of hours and would always show the same. Now, what I find is as my eyes adjust to the dark that the tritium seems to be brighter. So I don't really know if it's the tritium or my eyes, but most people with tritium watches will agree that as your eyes adjust and as you stay in the dark longer and longer, that tritium just seems to get nothing but brighter. So I'm not entirely sure if there's something scientific going on with the tritium or if it's my eyes. But uh, if, I've been, if I've been in the dark for a long time and I'm near a wall, it, it, it almost casts a shadow. So tritium, yeah, it's a really good thing. And um, there's a little argument over how long it lasts. Is it going to last for 10 years or 20 years? Well, uh, you know what? Right now, I don't know. I'll let you know.
So now to the price. You can see the price here on the Marathon website. They've got a little bit of a sale on it in their online store, but ironically, it's sold out. So apparently, as of the time of the filming of this video, there are an awful lot of military contracts coming due that has the watch in very short supply. However, I was able to buy mine on eBay. I want to say I paid around $1,150 from a well-regarded eBay reseller. So if you poke around, I'm sure you'll be able to find one of these watches if you consider it to be a good value for you. So listen, I wanna thank you for watching this video. Quick wrist watch check. I'm the camera gonna jiggle while I'm doing it because you know what, I, I just skipped the whole tripod thing for the moment. I like this watch. It's got a Swiss movement in it. Okay, look, I know it's a clone of a clone but or a clone of a generic. You know, so no, it's not an in-house movement, but the Salita movement's gonna find its way into a lot more watches now that ETA or ETA is not providing watches to hardly anybody else. So I like this one and um, you know, I hope that you will too. I have found it really quite accurate. It's accurate, it loses maybe five seconds a day. So at this level, that's really quite good, uh, better than expected. So look, this is a, a big chunky watch that's uh, it's extremely aggressive and masculine looking. Uh, you got to kind of have a big wrist to carry it off. I can I can do this, but like kind of barely. My wrist is seven and a quarter inches, but it's kind of flat. So I think it's working for me, but it, it, it might not work for everybody. However, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And for God's sakes, like and subscribe. My mother would appreciate it. Thanks.